in action. So wide open, Barcelo. Again! Oh. AB for three. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Also brought to you by a Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. And now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good morning, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We've got an early one for you. Grab your Cheerios, your Wheaties, maybe even your Captain Crunch. You know, who knows? Maybe even you, you're eating the uh, your oatmeal or some of those uh, those green drinks. I'm not a huge fan of, but I know a lot of people like those. Whatever you've got, it's breakfast time, and we've got BYU basketball for you today. The BYU Cougars are at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, for a neutral site matchup with the Creighton Blue Jays. BYU improved to 8-1 and one on the season with Wednesday night's 82-71 win over Utah State. It was BYU shooting that came alive against the Aggies. The Cougars shot 50% from the field and 46% from three. BYU had nine players score, four of which scored in double figures, led by Alex Barcella with 17 points. It was also a really good night for Trevin Nell, who got the start again as the Cougars adjusted to a smaller lineup. Nell finished with 13 points on five of six shooting, including three for four from three, a great evening for Trevin Nell. Now, with BYU's lack of size, shooting the ball like that is going to be crucial moving forward, and that includes today's matchup. Creighton is 7-2 and two, and coming off a loss at home to number 19 Iowa State last Saturday. So facing the Cougars today, that means that the Blue Jays will be facing two top 25 teams back-to-back. -back. Don't forget, BYU still number 24. Depending on what happens today, we'll see, uh, we'll see where BYU lands in the polls coming up next week. Let's also not forget... The Creighton was a Sweet 16 team last season. However, Greg McDermott's team came into the season looking to replace all five starters from that team. They've done a really nice job so far with five players averaging at least 10 points per game. They're led in scoring by 6'7 forward Ryan Hawkins with 13 points and six rebounds. They also have six-foot guard Ryan Nemhard scoring 13 a game. And if that na last name sounds familiar, it's because it should. His older brother is Gonzaga's Andrew Nimhard. So this is a really good team, and it's going to be a good matchup for BYU today. And we've talked a lot about the personnel changes that BYU has gone through due to injuries this season. One player who's been able to see the floor a little bit more this season has been Hunter Erickson. Hunter's played in four BYU's nine previous games, but as I mentioned, his minutes and his court time have increased since the Utah Valley game. I talked with Hunter before the team flew to South Dakota. Here is Hunter Erickson. Hunter, I realize that you can enjoy any situation that you're put in, but I have to imagine with more minutes, you're really enjoying this season probably more than you have. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, yeah, I would say so. It's definitely more fun to be to be playing, you know. And we always hear coaches and players talk about being ready. We just need guys to be ready when they're called upon. What did you do to stay ready and waiting for your opportunity? Um, I think that's just bringing it every day in practice, playing, uh, like, it doesn't matter if it's months before the season or over five games of the season like we're bringing the same intensity to practice every day so I can be ready to play like that when the time comes what has it meant to you to be able to get the minutes this year and earning those minutes and having the coaches trust you to put you out in those situations what what has that meant to you um it's been really awesome it's uh kind of tough with just because of the injuries that we've had which have kind of led to this but Either way, it's it's awesome to be out there playing with them, and I know I can uh, contribute offensively and defensively to the team and help us win. I was talking about that with Seneca prior to the Utah State game in terms of all these adjustments that you're dealing with on the fly. How difficult has it actually been for you guys to essentially become a new team overnight? Um, it's been a little difficult, especially with uh, the guys we lost who were our biggest guys so that literally yeah literally <laughs> so and especially Gavin who was like our biggest threat roll into the rim so 
our offensive uh, plays with ball screens and everything, it kind of changes all that. So we got to be play faster, play with the kind of personnel we have, which is a little smaller. What would you tell somebody when they say, what's the strength of your game? Or maybe even where do you feel most comfortable on the floor? What are you doing? I would say now thinking about it, my biggest strength is just being an athlete. Like whether that's making plays defensively or offensively and just being able to shoot the ball as well. So besides being able to talk about basketball, this is also an opportunity for listeners to be able to get to know you a little bit better. And obviously you've been here for a couple of seasons, but give everybody a little bit about your background because you committed obviously a couple years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. You served a mission in Charlotte, North Carolina. Is that right? Yes. Spanish speaking, which yes. I thought was a little, kind what was that like? That was, I would not have put those two together. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a little weird. North Carolina, you don't think North Carolina and Spanish <laughs> together, but it was definitely, there was surprisingly a lot of people who spoke Spanish there. And so it was really fun for me. You still fluent in Spanish? Could you just use speak it at the drop of a, of a hat? I would say so. I'm not <laughs> super... Don't worry. I do not know Spanish, so I'm not going to ask you anything in Spanish. It's kind of faded, but <laughs> I, I could definitely have a conversation with people still. So. so why was BYU the place? Because I know you had offers at the time coming out of Tempe View from Utah and other places. Why was BYU the right place for you? At the end of the day, uh, it, I just felt like the coaches who were here, who happened to be Dave Rose and his staff, I just felt like they wanted me the most and genuinely wanted me, so... You guys have Creighton coming up, and this is a team that was a Sweet 16 team. They, they look a little different, a lot of different personnel than they had last year, but you, you know that the pedigree is there in the program. It's a neutral site. It's a situation where you're not home, not away, but you're still away from Provo. How do you look at this matchup against the Blue Jays? Um, I think it'll be really awesome. Uh, I feel like we don't we don't really get these kind of games, especially with uh, teams like that had got the name, kind of like Creighton kind of thing. So I think it'll be awesome, especially at a neutral site, and we always know with uh, – uh, BYU fans they're everywhere all the time so we always, we always say that our we never play away games anyway so it's kind of nice it does feel like that uh, with all the BYU fans no matter where you go have you ever been to South Dakota by the way never never this is not one of the most uh, populous states but uh, I have been through Sioux Falls it's actually very nice uh, probably I guess I mean I know Mount Rushmore is there pretty close mm -hmm. so that's definitely something that would be on the bucket list, I think. And last thing, how many people ask you about the hair? Because I even went back and looked at, like, high school pictures. You've always had fun with your hair. Where does that come from? Uh, it's totally random. I Honestly, I just got a mohawk. <laughs> Not Nothing, like, too crazy in high school, just, like, a little shorter on the sides of the mohawk, and then... My mom was just like, you want to bleach it? And I was like, why not? And then I just kind of kept doing that and just still changing up, changing up a little bit, grew it out, cut it kind of thing. Natural color is red. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So are you going to stay blonde? Uh, yeah, I usually stay blonde throughout basketball season at least. Well, it's been fun to see you get the minutes and see you produce. It's certainly been fun to watch this team win basketball games and uh, hoping that continues against Creighton. Thanks for the time, Hunter. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That was Hunter Erickson, and not to turn into the South Dakota Tourism Bureau director here, but uh, obviously Hunter and the BYU basketball team, they're not going to have enough time to, uh, to make the trek to uh, Mount Rushmore from Sioux Falls. But if you ever get a chance to go there, I, I had the privilege of doing that uh, probably seven, eight years ago. It was awesome. I, I highly recommend if you have the chance to go and see Mount Rushmore, it's definitely one of those things that, uh, that you want to cross off the bucket list if you will. All right, that's where we're going to go, well, sort of, next. We're going to go there in, uh, in spirit because physically Mark Durant is not in South Dakota. We're going to talk about the game, but Mark Durant is here in the state of Utah. We will explain when Mark Durant joins us next. It will be our courtside conversation, which technically will not be courtside, with Mark Durant next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The BYU Cougars in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They will be playing at the Sanford Pentagon, a neutral site matchup against the Creighton Blue Jays. It's time now for our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. But Mark, you're not courtside. In fact, you're not even in the state of South Dakota. True or false, you demanded an upgrade to first class. They said no, and you refused to fly. True or false? 
Yeah, well, I wanted a, a flight on Kalani's new plane that he got as part of his deal, but he said no way. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wish I were there. I never thought I'd say I wish I was in South Dakota, but I wish I were there. And uh, I planned on being there. Uh, I, I have to leave a little bit later because of other work obligations. And as I went to the airport, I got notification that my flight was canceled and uh, I tried to work a bunch of different other angles to get there with, with this early morning game. It just was likely not going to happen. And I do have to shout out Jason to Greg Rubel, tell you a little bit about his travels. He left early yesterday and was able to get to Minneapolis, but then uh, every flight to uh, Sioux Falls kept getting canceled until finally there were no more flights. So he got in the rental car from Minneapolis and drove seven seven hours for 235 miles because it was the middle of a blizzard uh so greg <laughs> kind of lived the planes trains and automobiles movie this past uh, 24 hours so i hope he's doing okay this morning but what uh, what a what a mess you know and i, I wish i was there to, to see creighton play i think they're just a, an amazing program and of course to support to support the guys and be on the broadcast but it just didn't work out. And, and as everyone knows, Greg Rubel is just fine on his own, but I, I'd sure love to be there. Well, and uh, obviously uh, we, we'd love to have you on the broadcast as well. But the good news is for Greg, I have seen pictures. He's been tweeting out from the uh, from the arena. He's there all as well. So uh, we will we will certainly have the uh, the broadcast for everybody coming up. Uh, Mark, let's uh, let's focus on the uh, the win just a couple of days ago over Utah State. And BYU's shooting woes turned the corner against the Aggies. That was really fun to see. What did you notice that may give some insight into why, or maybe was it the same shots before they were just making them now? I think that's part of it. Uh, I think let's look at Trevin, who had a terrific game. Yeah, I think he was just kind of in a weird limbo spot, Jason, where he was he was getting. Uh, some minutes, but not enough to really feel comfortable with his shot. And he knew he was only going to get a couple, three opportunities in a game to shoot. And I think he put some pressure on himself. I think it helped him to become a starter and to know he's going to get, you know, five to 10 shots a game uh, and, and kind of get in a, get in a flow a little bit. He got him out of that limbo state that he was in and he, he just came out with a lot of confidence and I think he's a good shooter I just think he needed to reach a level of comfort and and a level of you know seeing enough shots go in that he felt comfortable on the floor uh, and and so I think that helped him a lot um, and Spencer Johnson's been good all year uh, I think Alex Barcelo is is actually in a bit of a slump it's hard to say you know a guy shooting those kind of numbers but he he hasn't been as good, but overall, I, what happens if you start making a couple in a game, then everyone starts thinking, oh, tonight's our night, you know, and, and they start feeling it. So it helps when a guy like Trevin can get off to a good start and then everybody seems to shoot well. But I, I think this team uh, is a much better than they have shot. I think we saw it the other night. Can they continue that will be important. You know, this is, this is one game Creighton gives up a lot of threes and, uh, and opponents shoot a pretty good number. So I think threes will be available and you'll get pretty good looks. Colorado State, who beat Creighton, made made 20 threes in a game, 20 of 34. So, you know, if, if BYU is going to continue their good three-point shooting, this will be an opportunity to do that, and they'll probably need to do it to, to beat Creighton. Well, and Mark, beyond just the improved shooting we saw against Utah State, Look, while he's only 6'6", having Gideon George back was a lift because of how long he plays. Mark, he had seven boards coming off the bench. I, I was really impressed at just just having Gideon back, how much, in, how much of an impact that made. Yeah, he did a great job on the boards. He's a ferocious rebounder, which obviously you need to have someone step up on the boards when you lose your, your bigger guys. He's a guy that can rebound from the wing. Uh, and he, he's a guy defensively that really can play defense against one through five, and that's super valuable. I mean, you can switch everything. He can play the seven-footer. He can play the point guard, and so he brings a lot of versatility to the team, and I don't think people realize what a big loss not to have him in that UVU game, and 
uh, even at Missouri State, how, how tough it is to play without, without Gideon and how important he is to the team. Uh, I think this team still, though, uh, obviously they're not going to be as good a rebounding team as they were, and they're going to need to kind of change the way they play and maybe not focus on that as much. Although I think, you know, Co- Coach Pope wants to, you know, he doesn't want to lose that entirely. But one of, one of the areas of concern in that, in that last game against Utah State is BYU didn't have any second chance points in the entire game. And that's pretty remarkable. And so uh, where BYU was dominating the offensive boards and getting a lot of second chance points early in the season that it's um, almost vanished here. And you, you need to get those easy points. You need to get those second chance opportunities. And BYU did not do that against Utah State and still won, but I think they'll need to do that better to today against Creighton. And I think Gideon George is a guy that can go get you those offensive rebounds and then has the offensive skills to be able to put it back in the hoop. So he, uh, I think that's where he can really help this team. Let's focus a little bit more on the Creighton Blue Jays, 7-2, and two, and, and you were talking about them in terms of uh, defensively. They give up a lot of threes. Um, th- this is not the same team that went to the Sweet 16, but I mentioned this in the first segment and, and when I was talking with Hunter Erickson. This is a team, though, that – you know, very much like, you know, when you have a good coach like Mark Pope, you know, Coach Pope's been here for three years, but even though the, the, the roster has changed over those three years, you just kind of expect, because the program is in a good spot and they're used to winning, that year in and year out you're going to get uh, a good team. And I think that Creighton certainly falls into that with Coach McDermott and what he's been able to do. Uh, let's dive a little bit more into, into your thoughts on this Creighton team, which I mentioned comes in with a, with a good record of 7-2 and two despite a new team. Yeah, I think they're terrific, and <clears throat> I think they're kind of the Gonzaga of the Midwest, or even BYU. I think those three teams are very similar. Obviously, Gonzaga is the cream of the crop, and they do it the best of, it, of the, those three teams. But just the fact that you have a great coach and you good program, have success every year, uh, and so that becomes an attractive spot for for transfers and and others, and just recruits in general. So even when you lose a, a all starters like like uh, Coach McDermott did um, last year. You know, you still have. I mean, it doesn't matter to Gonzaga; they can lose five starters every year and still be top of the country. And because they built that program, and the, it's a pipeline at that point. Uh, so, so they'll they're, they'll be fine, and they are uh, clearly are fine. You know, they've lost to some good teams. Colorado State's very good this year, and um, you know, speaking of Gonzaga, you got Ryan Nemhard. It's uh, I think the brother of the Gonzaga Nemhard, and so he's and he's a very good player. They've got really balanced scoring. They, they've got four guys that average double figures. One guy that is just knocking on on ten points a game. So basically, five double figure scores. That that, that presents a lot of challenges defensively because you can't, you know, they don't have a one or two superstars that you can kind of design a defense around. So you have to play really good defense. And <clears throat> BYU's been great at defense all year, but they I think they struggled on some of the uh, challenges against Utah state and had a hard time containing, containing the ball off the dribble and they'll need to do a better job of that. But this, yeah, I mean, this Creighton Creighton's team, it, it reminds me a lot of BYU in a lot of respects and uh, you know, similar, similar types of teams. And these are two very good programs. I mean, it's really fun to, to, to see this game happen. They've have, had a nice history uh, playing each other. You know, they're, they're kind of known for their, uh, you know, Kyle Corver and McDermott and those those guys are just lights out shooters. And and uh, then BYU's kind of had the Jimmer and the, and the Haas and all that. And it, they, they've just kind of had similar uh, trajectories over the over the past years. And it's fun to see this game happen. I wish I could see it in person like we talked about, but this will be a great college basketball game. And I'm excited to watch it. I am really excited to to ask you this question because I think this is right up uh, both of our alleys here. So, obviously, the game being played in South Dakota, what's the thing most people think about when they think of South Dakota? That would be Mount Rushmore. Uh, I have been there. I believe you have been there. You've been there, correct? No, no, I haven't. Oh, I, really I thought you did. I, and I thought, to interrupt your question, I thought, yeah, like, like uh, Hunter, you know, I thought, well, I don't really want to go to South Dakota, but maybe I can go see Mount Rushmore because I've never been. And then I looked on a map and it's like on the entire opposite yes. side of the state, like <laughs> yes. five hours. I'm like, Hunter, you ain't going to see Mount Rushmore unless you see it from the plane flying home. Yeah, you, you, can, you can see it away. flying back to Provo. Okay, so so here, and again, and I, I, I don't want to turn this into just constantly promoting Mount Rushmore, but if you get a chance to go, it's it's really cool. But here's what I wanted to ask you. 
playing off the Mount Rushmore uh, idea here, who was on the BYU basketball Mount Rushmore for you? So four players. I think, honestly, I, I think three of the four, you're going to probably have consensus from just about anybody you ask. But who, who would be your four on the BYU basketball Mount Rushmore? Oh, wow. Uh, Danny Ainge, of course. Danny, I grew up, he's my, he, he was my hero and, and I think the best player ever to play at BYU. Um, uh, obviously, Jimmer for that. Yeah. You know, what he did was magical. Um, uh, you know, I never saw him really play except for some clips, but I'm Crestmere. Yep. And uh, I'm just going to put my brother on because he's the best offensive player uh, I've seen, and he'll disown me if I don't. <laughs> so I know I'll get some flack from, from that pick, but uh, he's on my Mount Rushmore. I don't think you're going to get any flack whatsoever for choosing your <laughs> brother, who, by the way, is deserving of being on that. So let's make sure that that is clear. But I, like, I, 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 you, you proved my point. The first three that you mentioned, I think, are the 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 consensus ones that almost anybody that you ask that question that has a a, a general knowledge of BYU basketball would say it's Ainge, it's Jimmer, and it's it's Kreshmer Chosich. So I, I think those three, and then I think the fourth, y- your brother is one that I thought of. Um, Minson was another one that I thought of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Hutchins was another they're, one they're, that I thought of. Yeah, and you go back in history. There's certainly a lot of worthy guys, and then uh, you know Mike Smith was tremendous, and Tyler Haas, and uh, Russ Larson. I mean, uh, there there's a lot. I mean, Kelly Wesley, yeah. and I mean, uh, it, it's got a, a wonderful, rich, and storied tradition. And so we'll just need to put we get some more mountain and start carving. We we we've got to have more than four. Let's just keep carving. Well, we it, Mark Durant. I think he would look nice, <laughs> cut, in, chiseled in granite, or whatever. The... I, I'd be a little bobblehead at the bottom of the mountain that someone had. You, you can buy you can buy Mark's bobblehead in the gift shop at the bottom of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> right, <laughs> Mark. Thank you so much. I know you're missing this game, but uh, hopefully, uh, the the radio broadcast can entertain, enlighten, and uh, you can hear a victory uh, today, which uh, which would be great for this winning streak to continue for the Cougars. Appreciate the time as always, man. You bet. Hey, I learned long ago that Greg Rebell doesn't need me, but I love being with him. So I miss being with him and and wish him luck on a great broadcast. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. As always, we appreciate it. Have fun today. See you, Jace. Thanks. There we go. The great Mark Durant. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. After a quick timeout, we will check out one other, believe it or not, Our game is not the earliest tip-off today. There's actually one other game going on right now uh, in the top 25. We will get to that score and kind of set up the rest of our shows today, including uh, what's coming up during halftime uh, of the game today with a little BYU football flavor. I think you know where I'm going with that. We'll take a break. Come back to wrap up Cougar pregame live next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Cougar Pregame Live presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU and Creighton from South Dakota coming your way. We'll get you to Greg Rubel coming up in just a moment. Fans, remember, when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With the BYU win today, pizza will be 50% off at PapaJohns.com using the online promo code BYU50 on Monday. This offer will be good at any Utah location. All right, I mentioned one other game. Uh, It is uh, getting ready to tip off as we speak. Nebraska and number 18 Auburn, they're playing in the Holiday Hoops Giving uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's one we will be following today. Also coming up at halftime, head coach Kalani Satake, BYU football coach, staying in Provo through 2027, got a new contract. Uh, we will go over that, plus let you hear from Kalani and Athletic Director Tom Homo coming up at halftime. All right, after the break, we'll get you to the Sanford Pentagon for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Also brought to you by Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good morning, Cougar basketball fans, and welcome courtside inside the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. As today, the 24th-ranked BYU Cougars play their first ever game in the Mount Rushmore State, taking on the Creighton Blue Jays out of the Big East Conference in this neutral court Midwestern matinee. I am Greg Rubel, and I'll have today's play-by-play call. I'm usually joined courtside by the former Cougar hoopster, my commentary colleague, for the last 25 seasons of BYU basketball, the one and only Mark Durant. But uh, sadly, on this trip, Mark never made it out of Salt Lake City last night due to the wild winter weather in the West and the Midwest. I'm going to miss Mark Durant today. I know the Cougar Nation's going to miss Mark Durant today, but I wanted to quickly say hello to Mark Durant and tell him how much we wish he were here. Mark, are you there, buddy? Greg, I'm here, brother. Can you hear me? <laughs> I've got you. Well, <laughs> hey, uh, listen, so, uh, listen, Greg, I would have given anything to be there with you. We could have literally relived planes, trains, and automobiles. I would have been John Candy. You would have been Steve Martin. It would have been a blast. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my wife likes me, Greg. Okay? Yeah. That's very true. That's a great line, and it is very true about your real life. Well, anyway, Mark, I don't want to keep you too long. I just want to let listeners know that you uh, you did your best to make it out here, and the weather was not cooperating, and uh, I'm just grateful that I was able to get courtside because it was a wild night, too, uh, for me. Well, uh, I told everybody uh, on Jason's show that uh, what you did to get there, and there's no more, one more dedicated to his craft and to BYU and to, to making it. I, you would have moved mountains to get there, and you almost did, and and uh, we all know that you, you can handle the, uh, everything on your own, and I'm just a little uh, accoutrement to your, your, your greatness. So uh, anyway, have a great broadcast. I'm excited about this game, Greg. What a, what a great powerhouse that Creighton has been and BYU and these two great programs coming together. Uh, I, I'm just so disappointed I can't be there, but have a great call. Yeah, I'm going to miss you all throughout the day. And, and uh, post-game, we would have found a good place to go eat and uh, and relive this one as well. And I know that our listeners, they're not going to get you this way over the air, but I know they'll be following uh, your Twitter feed because you're going to be having, I'm sure, ongoing commentary. It'll be like it'll be like your court side. You'll be just doing the same thing, but you'll be tapping it out instead of talking it out. I think I'm better on Twitter anyway, so I'll do that. <laughs> I'm going to sync my, my TV with Greg Rubel. And I'm going to have a great morning. Mark, love you. Uh, best of luck uh, in getting to our next game. I'm, I'm going to make sure I get to Hawaii. Let's just be clear <laughs> about that. Didn't, didn't think you'd miss that one. All right. Thank you, Mark. All right. See you, Greg. Good luck. All right. That's Mark Durant. Well, it was, uh, it was an early wake-up call uh, for these two teams today. Creighton from nearby Omaha playing just a couple of hours down the road, up the road for them from Omaha. BYU flew out of town on Thursday. Uh, they beat the snowstorm that uh, hammered the Midwest yesterday. The Cougars and Blue Jays with the early tip-off today. And again, I'm just glad I made it here after some uh, nervous hours traveling from Minneapolis to, Saint, uh, to Sioux Falls late last night. And weathering the storm has kind of been the, the, the theme of the season for BYU. The Cougs have withstood almost every challenge, 8-1 and one through nine games. And in Creighton, it's another tall task on tap today. After this break, we'll hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Tune to the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. We are coming to you live from courtside at the Sanford Pentagon in snowy Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This 3,250-seat venue has a real throwback feel with the old school markings and the key on a parquet floor. This arena home every year to high-level neutral floor showdowns. 
BYU and Creighton, the latest teams to lace them up. The Cougs and Blue Jays meeting for an 11th time all-time. BYU's won the last two meetings, by the way, in 2010 down in Omaha and in 2016 at the Marriott Center in the NIT postseason quarterfinals. Time now for our pregame interview with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. And today, the coach gets his guys ready for another big-name game. Creighton advanced to the Sweet 16 this past spring. And, yes, the uh, Blue Jays return a new starting lineup. But uh, Coach Pope says Coach Greg McDermott uh, is by no means starting from scratch. Yeah, he's a he's a great coach. Obviously, a great program, a top twenty five program every single year, and uh, it's, it's a great game for us. And it's going to be a huge challenge. What characterizes this Creighton team from what you've seen through their first nine games? Well, they're just pushing so hard in transition. Uh, this young Nemhard, you know, Cougar fans are, are well acquainted with Andrew Nemhard. His younger brother is a stud. He's a he's a great player with an exceptional IQ and an unbelievable feel for the game and. He's pushing his ball in transition. They're going really hard. Uh, you know, they have some 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 really effective dominant post play. Also, um, a tough team, well coached, uh, physical, really really athletic. It's great, great, great team. They get a lot out of 44 and 11 inside. They play well together. Yeah, they do. Um, uh, two two veteran uh, front court guys. Um, you know, Hawkins 44 can really really shoot it. Uh, he's um, he's got deep, deep range, which is problematic. You know, guarding a four that can space the floor that that well, and and Kyle Brenner is a uh, you know really effective in the post. He's a one point four six points per possession in the post. He's not getting a ton of possessions, but he's so incredibly effective down there. He's a great rim protector. He's really, really he's long and he's vertical at the same time. He's got terrific timing. So those two form a, a formidable uh, challenge for us in the front court. All right, how do you be able to believe you then you match up with these guys? Well, I, I think it's it's really interesting matchup. Um, I think there's going to be some tempo to this game. I think there's going to be some pace to this game, and I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a great game for a Saturday morning. You plan to start as you've been uh, lately? Yes, yeah, same lineup. Okay. Uh, what was most impressive to you in the way uh, you guys really have, have kind of bounced back won the last two games? Well, listen, um, I'll tell you who's been special. This is Caleb Bloner has been so special. Going back and watching a film against Utah State, his the pace that he's bringing to the game right now, he is rim running on a consistent level with so much energy. He's racing the ball screens. He's filling space. Um, in terms of in our in our mission right now to try and add some pace to this game. He is leading us in an incredible way. Uh, you know, his stats weren't gaudy in the box score for the Utah State game, but he was far and away our offensive player of the game. It's not even close um, with how he's helping us transition. Um, so he's kind of leading the, the, the push here to try and to try and for us to grow and, and he's done an unbelievable job. Did Gideon give you about did he give you about as many minutes as you hoped to get from him? He, week? he probably gave me a couple more minutes, especially after seeing him play through his first <laughs> rotation. Uh, but you know, he just adds so much to our team. He just is a difference maker for us lengthwise on the defensive end, running the floor, rim protecting and um, so he was great and we expect him to be even better today, just just feeling better. Has Hunter Erickson found a spot in your rotation? I'm trying to force him into the rotation right now. He's a good player. He's been working for a long time and he's ready and so I'm trying to f uh, force some minutes on him because um, because he can help us. Okay you're out on the prairies for um, a morning game uh, maybe a bit about the routine you guys got into to get ready for this unique situation. Yes yeah, so we came out early we came out Thursday night late we got up early uh, Friday and kind of went through the same routine we're going through this morning essentially got up had meetings had breakfast and then and then came and had an early practice yesterday so hopefully our guys are a little bit accustomed this time it's early. Okay, yeah. Does it now? You're about the third away through the regular season, roughly at this point. Does that feel right to you? And in, in terms of paths, things pacing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It seems like it's all gone really fast. <laughs> uh, it always does. And so, um, but you know, I like where we are right now. This is a huge game for us. This is kind of the end of our second stance of this season. And so, um, we need to see what we can do and how we can perform today. And, and we'll learn and grow a lot from it. Last game before finals week, right? That's right. Big week for your guys coming up. Uh, you want to get get into it the right way. That's exactly right. And 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 finish off this. You know, we kind of broke this up into a first stands and a second stands, and this is finishing the second one. And, and 
and so so we need to finish this well uh, and 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 it'll kind of give us some momentum going into stage number three of the season all right well coach pope thank you for the preview we'll talk to you post game hey thanks for being here man <laughs> so it's a miracle you're here uh, f- flew to minneapolis and drove drove the entire way here uh you're 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 <laughs> unbelievable you're a tribute to cougar nation let's go baby thanks, coach. All right, that is Mark Pope leading us into today's keys to the game brought to you by Ford, built Ford Proud. Now, Mark Durant is not here, but that doesn't mean he hasn't supplied today's keys to the game. These are Mark's keys for today. In two Creighton losses, the Blue Jays outshot their opponents but had more turnovers, including 21 in their most recent game. Now, if BYU, Mark says, if BYU has fewer than 15 turnovers and Creighton has more than 15 turnovers, BYU will win. Those are Mark Durant's keys to the game, brought to you by Ford. As we head to break, we remind you that Smith says all your fresh game day grilling and tailgating favorites. And when you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smith's fresh for everyone. Coming up next is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good morning once again, Cougar Hoops fans. Welcome back inside the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for some breakfast basketball. 8-1 8-1 and one, BYU taking on 7-2 and two, Creighton. Cougars coming off a midweek home win over Utah State. The Blue Jays have been off since last Sunday's home court setback versus nationally ranked Iowa State. Second straight top 25 opponent for Creighton. For BYU, it's another NCAA tournament team from the spring. Sixth tournament team BYU's taking on. The Cougs non-conference schedule loaded with teams that went dancing last season. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Rubel with you from courtside. Missing Mark Durant today. Jason Shepard is our studio host. Our control board operators, Corbin Radford and Andrew Hare. Terry South is our coordinating producer. Our BYU radio engineers, Sean Fay, along with Barry Squires. Broadcast intern is Alex Dotson. We are glad to have you joining us on the new skin, BYU Sports Network, BYU Basketball Media Relations Director Tyson Jex will have the headset on today, and we may get cameos from Tyson throughout the day, so that's a little teaser for our audience. Our satellite radio flagship is BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and our over-the-air flagship is KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We are also heard on the BYU Radio app, the BYU Cougars app, the BYU Game Day app, the KSL app, lots of ways to tune us in. Well, three nights ago, in Provo, BYU held off Justin Bean and a Utah State rally to win for an eighth time in nine games this season. And as the Cougars complete the first third of their season, the metrics and the bracketologists all say that BYU is an NCAA tournament team. Long road ahead still, but even missing some big pieces to their puzzle, the Cougs are coming together and finding different ways to win, and that is very very encouraging. Well, mouth-watering Hawaiian-style food is just minutes away from the Marriott Center. Fresh off the grilled chicken, teriyaki steak, and sizzling shrimp can all be yours at Coconut Island Grill with the island flavors your mouth has been waiting for. Text the word COCONUT to 61090 for a free drink with your next meal. That's COCONUT with two K's, K-O-K-O-N-U-T to 61090. Coming up after this break, we'll hear from Creighton head coach Greg McDermott as the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show continues live from the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off show. Let's head back live courtside and join Greg Rubel. 
And we are live courtside at the Sanford Pentagon, Sioux Falls, South Dakota for BYU and Creighton. BYU playing a game in South Dakota for the first time ever. Creighton playing in this state for the first time since 1975. BYU owns the all-time series lead, seven games to three. It was almost six years ago, the last time these two teams met. And a postseason NIT quarterfinal matchup, Kyle Collinsworth came off his sick bed to help BYU to a win and a trip to Madison Square Garden for the NIT semis. In the spring of this year, both BYU and Creighton were NCAA tournament bound. BYU was bounced in the first round. Blue Jays made it all the way to the Sweet 16. But while the entire starting five from that team moved on, the new Blue Jays are primed for another solid season. They're top 75 in Ken Palm, top 85 in net. Quad two game for BYU. And for head coach Greg McDermott, it's a bounce back opportunity after a home loss to Iowa State last Sunday. You know, I think our guys are hungry to get back on the floor. We had finals this week, so that, that's always a difficult week for, for student athletes trying to balance, you know, trying to find a time to practice, number one, around the final schedule and then make sure you have them mentally where you want them to be during during the while they're either they're coming from a final exam or they're on their way to one. But I think we've had a good prep. Obviously, the Iowa State game was difficult for us. They, they played terrific, and, and our ball security wasn't very good. And, and we're playing another really good team today in BYU, so we're excited to get back on the floor. How does the nature of the challenge differ from a ranked Iowa State to a ranked BYU? You know, Iowa State, all those guys were new. You know, they, they, they have some transfers, uh, and and their defensive system is a little bit different. And, you know, BYU, those two guards are so experienced, and, and, and Lucas and Barcelo, and, and uh, it, it starts with them, and they make everybody else better as a result of what teams try to do to, to take them away. So, uh, but obviously Mark... It's done a great job with them. They're extremely well coached. They're disciplined defensively. They get out and run on offense, especially now that they've kind of been forced to go a little bit smaller with yeah. some injuries. So, you know, we've got to get back in transition, try to get our defense set, and, and uh, make sure they're not getting anything easy in that part of the game. Great balance through your starting five right now, and, and how much do you look to call Brenner as, as maybe an obvious area that should be one you can take advantage of today? Well, it, we'll see what happens. You know, he's got to chase Caleb around on the perimeter a little bit when, when, when they're starting with that small lineup, and hopefully we can take advantage on the other end. But, uh, you know, he's been really good for us. He's made good progress from his freshman to his sophomore year, and I think big guys, it always takes a little bit longer for him to develop, and, and he works extremely hard. And I think his experience with the, the USA under-19 team this summer was really good for him and has propelled him into a, what's been a good season to this point. Having turned over your starting five, now you're about a third of the way into this season. Uh, how well do you think your team has settled in uh, rotation-wise? Yeah, you know, we're getting there. We're, you know, Sharif Mitchell's been uh, in and out of the lineup. He will not play today. Uh, you know, he's our most experienced guy, so we really miss that. Uh, so, you know, we really have two freshmen on the floor at all times. So, uh, you know, that there, there's peaks and valleys with freshmen. That's just the reality of, of the process of trying to learn to be a college basketball player, especially when they're not surrounded by a bunch of experience. So these guys have worked extremely hard. They're about all the right stuff, uh, but we've just been a little bit inconsistent as a result. On this neutral court matchup, I think this is the first of a two. Are, is it going to be neutral in Vegas next year? Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah, that's what my understanding is. I don't know if we've settled on a site for that yet, but uh, you know, this will be a neat deal. It's unfortunate the weather didn't cooperate because that probably cost us a few fans coming from Omaha. But you know, I've been in here for a high school game when there's only four or five hundred people in here, and it's a great environment for college basketball. So I think it'll be enjoyable for both teams. Why do you like this game for both teams? Yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's right before conference play. You know, and you're playing it. You're playing a good team and to your point earlier it's a it's a quality opponent uh, that's going to help you in March hopefully if you're in a position to uh, for an NCAA tournament or for, for a seed line in an NCAA tournament so I I just think these are good for both programs and obviously I have a lot of respect for the BYU program and uh, we were excited to be able to add this to our schedule you have a short personal history but BYU is a team you've seen a couple times a couple of great games in the past yeah I haven't enjoyed it very much but I'm sure they have uh, you know I think we played Jimmer and his senior year at our place and then played in the NIT at the Marriott Center four or five years ago. So, like I said, I've always had tremendous respect, you know, for, for Dave when he was there and now, and now Mark. And, and uh, you know, they play the game the right way. Their, their kids are tough and disciplined. And it's, uh, you know, you always learn something when, you, when you're when you watching a team like BYU play. Well, Coach McDermott, as always, thank you for the time. Best of luck, safe travels, and have a great season. Yes, yeah, same to you, Greg. Thank you. That's Creighton head coach Greg McDermott. This is BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. BYU and Creighton coming up. Quick word that in 2022, BYU men's basketball will be dunking on cancer through generous donations. Each BYU dunk during WCC play will raise money for BYU Simmons Center for Cancer Research. For more information on the Cougars' fight against cancer, go to sccr at chem.byu.edu. A final word before tip is next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.